Okay, um, I'm going to start a series of videos related to the CSS Max Design List tutorial. It's a set of tutorials. You can see the address up here. Each tutorial has to do with lists on the list tutorial. And the idea here behind this is that most navigation bars are created using an unordered list of links. There's many ways you could potentially do it, um, but the idea of an unordered list makes sense because you're listing out your links. But you want to style it to look a lot better. So we're going to start with this as our basis. And if you understand this, you will understand a lot about how to do layouts and things. So it's a great starter for doing layouts. And on this first part, we're going to cover this one tutorial, which is background images for bullets. So what we're going to do is I'll show you what you end up with. Actually, let me go back one step here. You're going to end up with uh, something that looks like this in the end, where you have in this case, their bullet is these little uh, greater than signs um, used instead of the standard little dot. Okay, but then they have variations. They show you how you can line up your navigation on the right. You can set the width now. That's probably a good way to do it. Um, you can add spacing. And you can even do this thing with you create different icons based on what kind of file type that link is going to. So these are all just variations of it. So I'll show you how we can do that. The first thing you're going to probably want to do is find an image to use for the list. And one of the things I want to show you is the size of these images here, um, because that's a good reference point. Notice the size of that image. You don't want to go much larger than that. It's going to be hard to see. So I'm going to go ahead and paste in, and we're going to get the information about the bullet. And OK, maybe it's under images. We'll try this. If that doesn't work, we'll just go ahead and go forward from there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so what I can do is I can inspect that element and find out this image. It is 16 by 16. So that's a good reference point. If we can keep our images smaller than 16 by 16 or that size, I think we'll be okay. So I'm going to basically set right now, we're going to aim for a 16 by 16. Now, one of the things you could do is you could Google do an image search. And you can just look for bullet list icons, for example. Click on images. And you can search for different kinds of images you might want to use and grab for your bulleted uh, pictures. So you can look here, for example, and you might find some on here. The other way to do it is you can draw your own shape in a program like Photoshop or something. You could even take a picture of your head and uh, shrink it. Okay, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to start in Photoshop and just do it this way. I'm going to do a 16 by 16 blank document. Okay, we're in WordPress. There it is, actual size, but I'm going to zoom in for this particular assignment. And I'm going to basically double click the background. Actually, I'm going to leave that background in here for now. I'm just going to cancel that. I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to draw my shape on the layer. You've got a lot of options here. You can draw your picture. You can make selections and stuff. One of the things I'm thinking of is getting the custom shape tool and taking a look at the different shapes we have here. So right there in Photoshop, you got arrows, checks, light bulbs, pins, whatever. And you can either click, you can even click on here and you can look for other things. So we'll do like uh, music, for example, append it to the list and see what we have regarding music. So if you're a music lover, you might want to do something like that. And I'm going to add some shapes. And for mine, I think I'm going to do the spade. I want it to fill the screen. So I'm just basically going to draw it to fit in there. Get my custom shape tool selected. I'm going to go inside a little bit and not make it the full size. Uh, you may want to do a little drop shadow or something. I'm going to add that as well. And I should probably not make the distance so great. Uh, so I have this ready to go and ready to save, but I'm going to create my files next. So one of the things I've created is this. Um, I've already created my HTML for this assignment. And 
I'm going to just leave this up here and talk about what I put in here, and then you can kind of follow along. You can pause the video if you're watching it. Okay, so the first thing, of course, we got our headers. We've got our title. I've designed this so each of my pages, I'm going to do one that does the background bullets, one for the rollover, one for a nested rollover, one for horizontal. They're all going to link to each other. And even though I'm on the background bullets, I'm going to link to it as well. I'm doing that so that the, the, the navigation is consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this so you can see what it looks like standard without any bullets, without any images for the bullets. So there's our standard bullet there. Um, when all of your pages are created, if you click on rollover, you should be able to see that. It should be able to change up here. We'll look at horizontal. The one that's different is nested. And I'm going to go over that when I do the tutorial, but note, you'll notice my links look a lot more different. I'm going to go back to the background bullets. This is the one we're going to work on, so we got it loaded up to test. Now, I've created this, but I haven't saved it yet. So I'm going to choose File. And in this case, I'm going to save it as a PNG. And in Photoshop, you just do File Save for Web and Devices. When you're ready to save it, what we're going to do is we're going to save it into the same folder where your HTML file is. And my students have been encouraged to create a CSS folder and in there are the web pages. And inside that CSS folder, there should be a folder for your images. So I'm going to save mine in there. And I'm going to just call it BG Bullet. And it's going to save it as a PNG. Just remember what you named it. And click Save. And it should be saved in the right folder. And we should be ready to go ahead and do the tutorial. Now, as I mentioned, the tutorial is coming from this site here. So I'm going to, you can go through this by going to css.maxdesign.com.au and then clicking on list tutorial and you can follow through here. I'm going to put my steps up here, but I'm going to move them out of the way because you don't need to see that window. I'll use it as my reference. So once you have your basic list, we're going to start by removing the list. So in, if you want to remove uh, the bullet from a list, you target the unordered list. Okay, you, you go for the outside. And so on here, what we're going to do is we're going to set the list style type to none. So we start by removing existing bullets. Save your changes. Take a look at your page in the browser. Hit refresh. The bullet should be gone. Next step. Once you've removed the bullets, um, there's another thing about this is browsers will put padding and margin around their list. So let me show you what that looks like in using here. If I do my little uh, here, right here, so you see the UL has, um, has, it looks like there's some margin above and below and padding on the left. And then your links are pretty much, there's none there. But if you look here, you can see some of that on the outside. We're going to remove all of that to begin with. And then we're going to add it back in as needed. But to show you, if we remove padding, we save our changes and hit refresh. Notice they go back to the left. See that? And then if we remove margin, notice how when we set it we, to remove it, we set it at zero, but we don't give the unit of measurement. You don't need to do that. Make sure it's been saved. Hit refresh. See that? It's all gone. Margin's gone. Padding's gone. Okay. Once we do that, we're going to reset the margin to whatever size we want. So in the code on here, okay, so we're going to set the margin left. Um, my recommendation is we do the margin shorthand. First value is for top, next one is for right, then the bottom, and then the left, which we will set at 1 EM. Save our changes. Now, actual sizes may vary depending on your image. So just remember what you're adding, and then later on you may decide you want to go back and change it. Next step, we want to add our background image. Now, the background image is going to go not to our unordered list, but to our list item. So you see how I create a new selector for the list item. And now we're going to set the background image. URL, images, because I created the images folder, and then oh, I pasted it. Oh, good, I still have it there. I named mine BG-Bullet, and it was a PNG. Let's put a .png. 
do this. I like to put single quotes around those values. It's just a habit I get in. Some programming languages require it. I'm going to hit refresh. And once you do that, you see your image appear everywhere, right? Get rid of that. Well, the problem is our background uh, image needs to have a repeat of no repeat. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Background repeat. No repeat. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit refresh. And now I only have one bullet. So the only thing remaining to be done is to be able to position stuff so that we can read our text as well as see those bullets. So the next step we want to do is we're going to position our image using background position if we need to. Okay. Um, I think mine is positioned just right. I'm not going to worry about it just yet. So I'm going to do the next step on the tutorial, which is moving our content by adding to our left hand padding. So I'm going to add padding left. And now I'm going to try 16 pixels just to see what that does. I'm going to add a little bit more than 16 pixels. I'm going to add, for example, 20. That's looking pretty good, but the problem is now my uh, little image got cut off on the bottom, right? So we're going to have to play around with that a little bit. Um, so one of the things we might want to do is set the height of our list item. And I'm going to try a height of 18 pixels and just see what that does. Uh, it actually shrunk a little bit. I'm going to make it bigger. Twenty seems to be the magic number for the day. Um, we might want to try the background position as well. We're going to have nothing on the top or bottom, and we're going to try positioning it just a little bit. We'll try a .4 EM, see what that does. And that moved it too far. Oh, I'm sorry, this is left to right. That's top to bottom. Let's try point one. So you see what happens when you change that? You, you change the height there. I'm also going to just add a little bit of padding. Actually, I'm going to set my padding shorthand. We know the left-hand side needs to be 20. I'm going to add just a little bit on the top. Right bottom and more on the left save our changes hit refresh and we space that out. i think my image actually just got cut off on the bottom i don't think the rest of it got cut off if we do that your background position needs to change try point two and as you can see from here on out you're just adjusting numbers uh, we did do EMs and then we did numbers, so, so we might want to do it as EMs instead. So now everything's in EMs. That's a little too much. Let's try one EM on all these. See what that does. And we'll just add like a 1.2. So you see what I'm doing here? I'm just going in and fine-tuning each of these until I got it where, where I like it. Okay, so I'm going to leave you there. That gives you some ideas.